I just finished, well, almost finished, building this 2x72 belt grinder. All of the parts that I used on this were made in USA, so I think I need to make a little badge to go on it that just says made in USA. I've never used my CNC for metalworking before, but I'm gonna try to engrave the US flag and made in USA on a little square piece of stainless steel. Now, I wanna get pretty intricate with this because the badge has to be pretty small to fit on the machine, and I wanna make the US flag with all the stars. So I'm gonna use this V-bit. Hopefully, this point will be able to engrave a little bit, probably 30 thousandths wide at the point. I've actually upgraded V-bit since this one because for woodworking, that 30 thousandths is a bit of a problem, but I think it'll be about right for this. It should act about like a 30 thousandths end mill, and yet the structure of this V-bit will give it a little more strength than just an end mill would have. If everything goes as planned, this should be what it looks like, except I want to paint the flag the right colors. Let's see what happens. So I'm noticing that the word made is quite a bit deeper, quite a bit bolder, and it also has quite a bit of a burr on it. Everything else is pretty smooth, so I think that bit wore out pretty quickly. I'm going to take the bit out and see what it looks like. So it chewed up that point a little bit, but actually all things considered, it's not that bad. Mm, there it is. This is another one of the exact same bits. The one that just cut the stainless steel is on the left. And if you're wondering what kind of bits these are, they're white side number 1550. I wanna go ahead and paint that flag now. You know, make it look right. In case you missed it, I used the CNC to basically center punch this so I get those holes in exactly the right spot. So the idea is to paint down in this lettering, well actually paint everything, and then sand off the surface so that I leave a nice bright surface with paint in the letters. I hope there's enough in there. I'm being mobbed by bees. So I think that looks pretty cool. It's rustic. The problem is, I wasn't going for rustic on this belt grinder. That's not the look I want. So I'm gonna make another one for the belt grinder. I'm sure I'll make something else in the USA at some point, and I can put this on that thing. But for now, I'm going to make another one with a little bit crisper lines and a little higher polish on the finish, and without these little lines in the middle of the letters. See, on the original, I only took two passes, one here and one here. And so deflection caused there to be a little spot in between that didn't cut. So I'm hoping by taking more passes on that, like five or six little passes instead of just two, it'll eliminate that spot in the middle. So I've gone back in and I set my step over to just five thousandths. It just finished the cut, but I'm not quite happy with it yet. It's not all that much different than the first one, to be honest. I'm not sure if you can really tell on the camera, but each of these lines has a little bit of a ridge in the middle of it. I suspect that this cutter is actually not cutting at all. It's more just mushing the material and pushing it around. That kind of makes sense, considering that cutter is not really a cutter anymore. It's extremely dull. 
So one more thing that I can try, I've been using a conventional cut on this. So I'm thinking if I switch to a climb cut, intuitively thinking of how the bit rotates, it should push the material out instead of pulling it in. And if it pushes it up to the edges, then that's where it can be sanded off when I sand the surface smooth. So it should work to just switch this to a climb cut. That worked so incredibly much better. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. If you have a CNC, I really encourage you to mess around with the climb versus conventional cut because it can make quite a bit of difference and you can really manipulate the outcome. So I wanna dive in a little bit more as to why it made so much difference on this where I believe it's just pushing the material aside and not really cutting that much. So here's my representation of a cutter. And in this case, we're cutting around the inside of this. So a conventional cut is this way, climb cut is this way. We're dealing with an extremely dull cutter. So, so if we do a conventional cut, which is what I started out with, you can see how the material that it removes as it goes around, it'll be pushing it towards the middle. Whereas if we do a climb cut, the bit, of course, is rotating the same way, but we're moving this way. So now the material that it's removing is going to be pushing it toward the outside, which is exactly what I need in this case. I definitely was removing some material. You can see there's quite a bit of stuff back here. Anyways, I'm going to go cut this out now, drill the holes, and then try to paint it. See if I can make it turn out better than the other one. It really looks a lot cleaner. I just need to take this up to a higher polish this time. Are you ready? I am super happy with how that came out. That's exactly what I had envisioned. Just that polish with still some lines on it, still nearly a mirror finish. It chipped the paint a little bit right there, but I don't think that's worth fixing. I just really like how this turned out. So now I have to figure out how to mount this on the belt grinder. I drilled two screw holes for number 440 screws, but I don't have a tap for them. Upon looking in my collection of them, I found these. I'm not familiar with this kind of screw, but from the end, from the end, they look triangular. I'm not sure if you can tell that. Anyways, I measured these screws with a caliper and they measure in at about 116 thousandths. So I drilled this hole, this is 113 thousandths hole, and threaded this in. And it actually appears that this works a little bit like a roll form tap, because if you look carefully at this hole, it's threaded. So I'm just going to drill some more holes exactly at 113 thousandths and screw it on. I've got this positioned exactly where I want it, so I'll just mark it. And now I'll drill there and there. I'm not going to drill all the way through because there's actually a part that slides inside of this tube. And these screws are very short, so of course they don't need to be drilled through. I was actually concerned that this might happen. I think because I drilled it freehand, since I was a little bit wiggly, it drilled a little too big, so now the screws just fit easily. I guess I'll have to drill it out and use bigger screws. So these are the same sort of screws. You can see they're kind of triangular. I can feel it even spinning it in my hand. And I'm gonna try again. I'm also gonna put a drip of oil in each of these so that it'll work a little more like a thread forming tap that needs to have some oil to help it slide. 
Okay, that one works really well. This one actually seemed like it bottomed out. How do I get a thumbs up in frame? Really happy with that. If you want to see the rest of the belt grinder, just come back for my next video. That's what it's going to be about, I think. No, no promises, though. What else? Oh, um, this video. What do you think of this video? Um, very impromptu. Just grabbed my phone and did it. So let me know what you think of that, this style. A little less formal, maybe, than some of my videos. So it's really easy for me. I think that's all I need to say. So thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye.